Yo, my people, welcome to Behind the Hits, hosted by Mixtape Madness with myself, Ebbs. In this series, we're going to be showcasing the growth and evolution of production in the UK rap music scene over the years. Today, I'm going to be chopping it up with one of the rap scene's top upcoming producers, X10. His catalogue includes the likes of Diggity, Unknown T, Millions, Designer, T-Way and much more. Let's see what he's saying. Bow, I'm back again. Another episode of Behind the Hits with If You Know You Know, If You Don't You Know, he's going to let you know anyway. Come on, it's X10. How's everybody doing with them, man? See, I know you guys said, yeah, we're good, but he can't hear you. But anyway, <laughs> we, we hope you're good at home. Um, X, how's life, man? Bro, it's good right now. It's keeping busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been so busy recently. We've got things going on everywhere in London. Okay, We've okay. Going to New York next week. Oh, that's big. Bro, that's big. Just, just doing my thing right Do now. you know what? I'm not gonna lie, um, because I keep really like my ears to the streets, locked in with what the producer man are doing. Um, you look like you're glowing, man. You look like you. You look like you're in the best place possible right oh, now. Man. I can't lie, man. And that's and that's good to Appreciate see. Appreciate that, man. Let's run it back for people, because again, you great beats. Everyone knows that you know you got some media content there. You got placements whatever but not a lot of people get to know the guys behind the, the okay. beats that's why this is behind the hits okay. so run me through um childhood what was it like just growing up talk to me man yeah man so uh, so i was born in Walthamstow, but okay. when i was young we moved down to cambridge down there there's not much of a music scene going on okay, yeah. but before i was doing producing i was uh i was playing the trombone you know oh is it like, what, what but, age how old are you, you bro, i was like what like seven eight had, had the wonder grand, kids wonder had kids. the grandparents like, like forcing me to do some instrument i had to yeah, choose yeah. something so I, so I picked up a trombone and I got pretty good at that. And I picked up piano after that a little bit, um, but it wasn't my kind of music. Like oh, after a while, okay. I was deciding it's not my kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. My dad, he's always been into kind of like production side of music. Did he do anything like role-wise like, as he was growing up or is it just something he was into? Yeah, man, he's always been into music as well. He's always yeah. been playing piano, he's been doing oh, violins, right. stuff like that, man. So. I kind of picked it up, then I then I one day I downloaded that this little mobile app on my phone, yeah, yeah. where where you can like, just program like some some drum patterns and that, and I was oh, like, okay. and eventually just upgraded upgraded, yeah. went onto the computer, got FL Studio, and it was a rap since then, man. What about like X in school? Because I'm not gonna lie, I know your personality is fun. I like X as a guy, like, but in school were you like the were you like a troublemaker? What was it like? Or were you actually quite quiet? Like, even, do you know what I mean? I was, I'd say I was quite quiet back in back in secondary school. Like, yeah, I was yeah. kind of just doing me most of the time yeah, yeah. it was like year nine times I started picking up production and then that kind of oh. just became my life sort of thing and I started just doing that I was like and in the music class I was like lo I was like downloading my software onto the computer yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, not doing what the teacher said to do but I was just, just making <laughs> so you were the, you were the little I was, I, was just, I was just making beats man yeah, yeah, all, yeah. all the time every lunch time I go to the music studio to make beats like that's just all we were doing man it must have hit a point for you in education where you were actually like I, I don't really want to do this no more. Well, I already know what I want to do. For like, real, man. yeah. When was when was that? Well, like? That was probably like the start of sick form. Like, I was oh, I was going okay. to my lesson. I was doing history. I was doing business. I was yeah. doing music, and then it was like, I was just like, none of this stuff is really sticking out to me. I want to do what I know and like, oh, what okay. I enjoy, and I realize I can can monetize off this, yeah. and then turn this into a career one day. Because I think I remember following you and mm. seeing. That eventually you had a job and you quit it to pursue full time. Yes. But before, just before then, was there any moment that happened like in your musical career that made you think, yeah, no, nah, like I can do this. Like I know I'm doing it, but I'm being kind of restricted by my job and that. And yeah, do you know what I mean, hundred percent. You know what it is? It's just for people that I was around. Like, yeah. So I started making friends with like the big hitters in the scene. So I'm like Gotcha, Ghosty, yeah. and then I was like, okay, cool. This is what I want to do now. And like, yeah. I've got a little bit of traction. I've got a wanty placement to my name. I'm like. We can we can upscale this a little bit. Yeah. Just need to put the time and energy into it. And I was realizing my job, I wasn't really feeling it. I yeah. was like, you know what? Like, just take a leap. Like, I'm young, so I can. You got you got the time. Yeah. Afford to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can afford to take that risk, and I'm just blessed that it's paying off at the moment. You know yeah. what I mean? Obviously, everyone starts somewhere, but whether like some of them were already kind of putting more of their foot into the ground, and you yeah. were just you're now with them guys and you're all doing crazy things and it's okay. that must be a mad feeling like all of you all being cool and you, one person's here one person's there but you're all in the same scene kind of rising it's so sick just yeah. for everybody like we're all just friends at the end of the day and that, that's like before music and yeah. the fact that we get to make music together yeah. and win in the music team together like it's just it's crazy man. Yeah. I see um, Baby Cashy tweeted it mm. he was like I've got 
friends in I've got music friends and I've got friends in music. Yeah, that that That's was fact. big. That was big. I saw it and I was like, yeah. No, trust me on that. I feel like the music always comes out better when you've got a relationship with the people you're making with yeah. it with before otherwise it's by force and the music by force yeah. it's never the same it's like anything in this life like it's not you're not going to get the authentic result if you're just it's not natural exactly, man. Yeah. in terms of sound because it's it has majority been drill um, yeah. as of this date yeah. I know you can do other things yeah. what, what would you say is your role like what are you bringing to the game that is like maybe helping it go forward, just helping it move. That. What would you, just, what do you think? Like? At the moment, like we're just trying to progress for drill sound more. So yeah, we're yeah. trying to just do some different stuff with it. So yeah, like drills always had a, always had like a traditional sound, a traditional okay. bounce. Yeah, and we're trying to just expand that. We're trying to mix it with trap a bit. We're trying to mix it with other genres. Uh, some stuff listeners may not have heard before. So mixing it with R and B, mixing it yeah, with jazz, yeah. mixing drill and trap together, yeah. just everything can be mixed and it, it can work. Yeah, and that's that's what I mean. That's the difference we need, and that's cool to hear because I feel like draw, or no, I don't even want to say just draw. Mainstream sound is mm. going to evolve in a way we're going into a subgenre world where you even if it's not just draw, you have main genres, and it could be R and B this or draw this or this this, and I feel like. Um, a lot of the upcoming producers are going to play a massive part in that because they vocalise how bored not bored but they don't enjoy making the current sound as they do other sounds exactly in that you know a current sound can only stay current for so long before people decide alright cool it's time we switch it up a bit and like you can see it's already happening with drill like the way that drill was two years ago so more recently, it's the, the, near the, the sample same. thing, yeah. like nobody would have thought it turned oh, yeah. out like this. And it's just about trends. And I feel like it's going to be new trends coming along very soon that people yeah. just won't see coming. I now want to get on to um, creation process for X. Okay. So run me through what the day of X10 is like running mm. through to that session. Like. Oh man, so these times, because I live I'm far away from London, yeah, like two yeah. hours. So that's, that's a bit of journey time already. Yeah. Come over to London. And we're getting a session, and this is just the main thing really is just making music whenever possible, just finding inspiration, whatever. I'm trying to do some more reading recently. Yeah, I clocked that. I've seen some I'm books, some really, um, behind the scenes guys, you might not know. He's reading, he's reading. I see some I'm, books. Try, I'm trying to do a bit more reading nowadays, you know, just get that, get that information going, you know what I mean? Would you yeah. say that affects? How you just look at things, even musically, sometimes as you yeah, I mature. Feel like, I feel like it's the music side, but I feel like with music, there's two sides of things. There's the music side and the business side of things. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like reading and all this information, like they're as, as important as each other, you know, and having that entrepreneurial mindset yeah. and stuff like that, like that's as important as producing good music. Like, that's to be able to build the connection. Yeah, that's stuff. big because you're quite young and a mm. lot of men have experience in the game or have a focus on one thing and don't really think long term. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of um, young people watching this are going to hear that and it's going to be a good piece of advice you've already thrown like in the middle of the interview that I think oh, exactly. it's like, crazy man your music can be so sick but yeah. you actually have to be able to connect the dots you have to be able to get the music to somebody who wants it you know what I mean yeah. that's as important as the actual music itself music is now let's say it don't exist but Exxon has to get paid to do something for a living what is it that people don't know that you love that it's like yeah you know what guys if I could do this for a living as well, if music didn't exist, I would actually do this. You know, before I was doing music, yeah, bro, all I was doing was gaming. Oh, like, bro, okay. I was gaming nonstop. I was a god at Call of Duty, man. I was okay. hearing them trick shots on Black Ops. Yeah, you know, man, I got, there's esports there, you know. Bro, people yeah, have yeah, tournaments bro. like there's esports bro, there. That's there what I'm you know? that. I would have been one of them guys. You know oh, what I mean? okay, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Sitting there just on my, you know what I mean? Like, Wait, I so what, 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 do you have like, are you like a typical, like, um, a lot of people associate, like, you get the Doritos, the tangy cheese, and one energy drink. Are yeah, you one of Bro, man, have a Mountain Dew. Bro, a man had the bowl of popcorn, bro. I was up until like 5 a.m. just just grinding out Call of Duty and that. So I feel like if I wasn't doing music, I'd be one of them guys, or I'd be like yeah. one of the Twitch streamer kind of just. Oh, yeah, that's a bad thing. I'm seeing. Yeah. But either, either way, man, I just, I like just being with people. Yeah. Like, I feel like you could probably, anyway, incorporate that into your life now, like when you're in places just live streaming, bro, whether it's making it. I think you could probably, you could probably do that now. So that's like, lit. I feel like the key is just creating content that people yeah. are going to want to watch. Like, and like, there's always stuff that people can be interested in watching. What I now want to ask is, what's unique to you that helps you stand out, you feel, as a person and also in your music? Because you know, some man will drop like instrumentals and you can go like, raw. I know that's an X10 beat because... Okay. So what's that for you in music and even as a person, like, you know, I feel, your colleagues I feel, you got? I feel like music-wise, at the moment, I'm trying to put my 
kind of my own kind of patterns into yeah. into place so things are like recognizable to my sound so i've got a certain snare pattern i do in my, oh in yeah, my yeah. I've, I've got, got, that, I've yeah, got yeah. a certain you know kick pattern i like to do yeah. you know i've got a certain way i mix my sound so like, okay, like okay. i think that these are all things that are unique to each producer and which helps them like solidify their own sound all but right like i said i was always trying to evolve i'm always trying to you know keep it going not trying yeah. to keep all the same stuff but um as a person i know I, I like to think i'm quite sociable people yeah i like no, to you think are, you, you are, know yeah. like you know i like to i'm like to get on with people yeah. be kind to everybody that's that's my main thing this you just got to be nice to everybody man mm. man don't realize it but the art they put out there you can actually somewhat tell kind of what the person's like based on what they've put out yeah. there sound wise and i feel like what you've just said it actually can be translated to the stuff you've put out. I'll be, I'll be so real. That's what so I'm saying. I feel like when I was like kind of coming up, for like a few years ago, yeah. it was all about the dark kind of beats. Yeah. And obviously nowadays that's not as prominent in the genre. People yeah. are trying to make the, the happy lullaby type stuff yeah, 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 yeah. with the drill drums and all. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's always just changing, man. But you've got to kind of pave out your own lane in this thing. And nah, of course, man. So X, like, mm. run me through, like how your creation process for your beats are like how you make your beats in the studio so more time I'm, I'm using fl studio you know i like to program uh my melodies and that in i like to program my drums in we just mm. use like sample packs drum packs mm. like sometimes i like to use like actual external instruments so we've got okay. like midi keyboards we've got like pads like the circuit rhythm and that that you can actually play the drums in on that like, and it just gives you more of an actual connection with the with the beats that you're programming and stuff as opposed yeah. to just clicking it in on the actual Thing. You've said some really great things that I feel like listeners, whether they're old fans, new fans, people that are just turning into the scene, I think are going to appreciate this interview. Mm. Um, just to sign off, like, what is something that you want people to know? Like, you know what? If you have this in mind, it's going to help you a lot going forward. Like, this is something that I think I've learned recently, and I've, I've been learning this recently about just the whole consistency, consistency thing. Yeah. Like, you know, it's very cliche, consistency yeah. is key. But it is actually really and truly, it's the thing where if you're putting the work in and you stay motivated, you know, your dreams only fail when you quit. Yeah, thing, it's true. You know Ooh, that's I mean? quotable. Like, well, put that on my gravestone, man. Bow, and that was Behind the Hits with Mixtape Madness. I've just been chopping it up with X10. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Until next time.